Ear Ground Radio. New voices amplified. Hello world, hello ear ground, we're here with Mr. Plot Mako. My name is Tanya and we're here as Kosher Management and Jungle Entertainment Ventures. We're a digital cultural marketing and management firm that specializes in exporting talent and product expressions from Zimbabwe. We're very passionate about our, our identity, our culture, our heritage, and we are excited to share that with the world. Very excited. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so on the management side, we work with different um, cultural brands. So when we say cultural, it means artists or talents from the sports world, from the music world, from the fashion world, um, film, and even food world. And what we do with them is we come up with a brand strategy, a strategy for them to go international, work with them to develop their digital presence, their digital audience, and the products that they come through with in terms of the packaging of those products and the production such as to an extent of those product products. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's, what's your relationship with uh, Jungle Music? Uh, Kosha and Jungle? Is it Kosha uh, a sister company to Jungle? Is it an affiliate? How is the relationship like? I'll ask Mr. Ashley to answer. Well, uh, so the relationship between Django and Kosha is actually, Kosha stands as the management company, then Django stands as the distribution company. So Django covers, uh, when we talk about selling music online, digital, and also that means YouTube, we have your digital stores uh, that covers iTunes, Deezer, Spotify. So. That's the part where Django comes in, and so Kosha and Django, as Kosha is the management side, which covers with artists, with dealers with artists, then those talents also, some of them, they are musicians, so that means their digital side is covered with, uh, with Django, the distribution side. Mm -hmm. so. uh, which are some of the artists or products or uh, talents that are on the Kosha uh, catalog? Head of brands. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as ta oh, I'm Ruby, by the way. Hi, everyone. Um, so as Tanya mentioned earlier on, we've got quite a number of artists on our stable, um, in our stable at the moment. Um, you've got the likes of Killity. You've got Takura, who we distribute for. You've got Knox. You have Stana. Um, who else? Have I missed anyone? Stalia. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> Enzo, Enzo. <laughs> um, with that comes Chill Sport Records um, and everybody else that that stable is currently recording. Um, I think that's it. Right? No, no, that's no. that's the music. That's the music. music. <laughs> that's you were asking that's about the music. No, you were asking about the Korsha time. Oh Korsha right, time. my bad. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the music. And then when it comes to sports, this is something that we recently started. I think a couple of months ago. Um, we recently signed on Raza. I'm sure you know who Raza is. Um, yes, and he's Raza's PA. So and we roped him in. Just so at least you have a perspective of the person who works hand in hand with the talent. Right, hi guys, I'm Julian. So I'm responsible for the Raza brand. Basically, my job is to make sure that we grow this Raza brand. Arguably, he's the best cricket in the country at the moment. So we just need to maintain that status and to enhance it. Basically, that's what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, how old is Kosha? And how long have you guys been active on this Zimbabwe? See, Kosha was born on May 16th, actually, 2016. And it was born uh, when we took on Takura's brand for management. But it wasn't known as Kosha then yet. It was just, let's see what this is going to grow and become. So we officially turned three in May this year. Um, yeah, and I think we're, we've, we've done well for a three-year-old baby. Yeah. And we've got so much more that we have 
<clears throat> and our arsenal to share with the world and to Absolutely. do and become, yeah. And for a young artist, uh, what is it that Kosha is offering them that will make them say, I want to be part of Kosha? For me, I don't know what everybody <laughs> else will say, <laughs> but number one thing, we say we offer you the most dedicated, most connected, most strategic thinking and planning team the industry can offer. We live, breathe, literally sleep thinking about your brand, about your products, about how to get you outside and loved by the world, not just other Zimbabweans in the diaspora. That's the, I think that's the number one thing I would say we we'll yeah. bring. Absolutely. Because by, by virtue of the name alone, Kosha, Chinuchaka Kosha, that's something that's very important, something that you need to be curating and taking proper care of. And the one thing that Tanya was, um, is always quick to always highlight is Kutujoni, Vanvajinji, Vanfunga Kuti, like the arts and entertain, entertainment industry, Chinuchisnabasa. Mm. but it's actually bigger than that mm. it's multifaceted it's more than somebody and you go straight to the stage and the microphone there's a business behind it <laughs> right Absolutely. and it's also we've taken it upon ourselves to actually educate people because the biggest problem or the hindrance this is again in my own perspective mm. the biggest hindrance that we have especially in the music sector is good find lots of dishonesty mm. You have certain instances where people are just getting married, and then And they also need to understand that it's not about again you just being on stage. You also have to take ownership of your product. You need to know what's going to happen to your song once it's been released. Can I yeah a digital platform Jore wa kutu di Jore out pani mari. Mari yo kuti ju wanda tu wana kuta say, tu wana kupusha product. Tu wana kuta heavy marketing. Tu wana kuta A, B, C, D kuti jese. Because at the end of the day, you can get it out to make a sense. And in making sense, it's not only about the dollars and cents, but actually kuto grow our industry at one. Because tisu at one, we're going to mold it into what we want it to be. Right. So I can just take a cheap kanya from the word go, then tineta to kanya ramu noise. The brand Kosha is mainly identified with music mm. uh, so far in Zimbabwe and there's a bit of discord with regard to perception and what the brand stands for. Uh, in some quarters, Kosha is seen as a culture voucher. Mm. In other quarter, quarters, Kosha is seen as a brand that is intending to grow and uh, develop talent. Uh, what, what, what's the reality? How is it like? How are the relations between Kosha and artists, managers, promoters, and uh, yeah, and the industry? Um, <clears throat> trying to think who best to answer that so that my voice does not do the most. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't know. Um, culture voucher. I think that makes me go. Mm. <laughs> You know, um, I think, yeah, that's the biggest misconception I think people have. And leading up to this conversation with you, it's become something as a team that we've become more mindful of and thinking how best can we educate people on exactly who we are and what we do and how we do it. Number one thing I think on our list is we invest in education, in educating the artists or the teams that we get to work with. And what comes with that is, say for example, when we took on the Killer T brand, for example, he had, and most dancer artists in fact, they have a lot of different promoters or digital promoters that have access to their music to push, as they say, on different platforms. So not to name drop, but um, there's a lot of outside promoters who can say, I have 50,000 subscribers on my page, let me push your new video on my page and then someone else will do that. So what we came through as Kosha or Jungle was, you know, you need your own digital address, literally. You need a central point or a central channel where people can access your music. Now, when we do that, it means we're literally neglecting all those other players from whatever commissions or whatever deal that was existing then. But on top of that, what then happened is the artists we now engage then learned good, ah, ah, paito budamari. Mm. Yes, it wasn't just going to push out my works to get them to the people. When you monetize music, this is what we mean. 
every play or every download equals to money. So to the artists that are engaged with us, they get that. But to the promoters looking in or to the other players looking in, so that voucher part comes through, but not from the people we're in business with, but from the people we are not, not in business with. So, and, you know, it's a matter of looking back at our history, at our journey. Jungle, who's our big brother, has been in the business in Africa for seven years. You cannot survive seven years being a culture voucher. It's impossible. At some point, someone would have taken you to court and we would have been out of business. You survived that long with clients that you've had from day one because there is definitely, like she was saying, transparency and honesty and real business that's being generated. We wouldn't be doing this kind of pampas mm -hmm. Nobody would travel. I would not convince these people to leave whatever they were doing to come here if it wasn't honest and if it wasn't making money. It's not just a Tanya vision. It's a shared vision as Kosha to grow an industry. So... I don't know, have I communicated yeah, that yeah, properly? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, the biggest misconception, like you touched on earlier, people will always have opinions, especially when you come in and you're trying to like spin the wheel, mm -hmm. like reinvent something and do something the right way, the way it's supposed to be done. And inadvertently, you're going to be stepping on a lot of toes. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say, but it's just people who are jealous. Mm -hmm. It's competition. You know, just trying to put out a she is a she best and start out dinner, but it's out to no doubt. But unfortunately, or fortunately for us, Chokwa Dishon was on Buddha anyway. Most of them not have, but in first year, I think I go to those titles like it's a gata quarter. These guys are actually the real deal and they know what they're doing yeah. because. It's, it's not only about us just talking and shouting from the rooftops, it's actually having our work speak for us. So, right. yeah. And I, I feel like Kosha's work, Kosha's outputs, Kosha's projects are doing just that. So what, unfortunately for them, unfortunately for us, what they're doing is actually pushing our, our name even further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, once your response to that um, talking allegations that you are only signing artists that have already blown up and these artists blew up on platforms uh, that are run by uh, your competitors and you, you take them from that competition uh, when they become known on their platforms and you're not interested in unknown talent. Um, okay, I'll try to <laughs> answer that. First, firstly, that's the misunderstanding that people have. You could yes, But if we are doing so to educate them that their content can be monetized, we are not doing so because to push on the page. No, because how will then our artist grow and how will then our industry grow if you are only doing content for exposure? If you are only doing content for numbers. So Kosha is then coming in and saying, hey, yes, you can get exposure globally. You can, you can get exposure, kupi, kupi, kupi. But let that exposure bring you money and actually say, hey, no kwanza kutombo, tinga wa sadza kana kutinga chingwa. Because as you may say, you are ningi with a million followers, but you can't even bring bread to the table. Mm -hmm. And how then will you expect a Zimbabwean artist to get a BET or get a Grammy if you are just doing things for exposure. These are things that we are trying to say as musicians, as artists, whether you do comedy, film, fashion, whatever you do, <coughs> learn that what your content can be sold to the world. The more, that's why Kosha is there to brand you, manage you, and give you people to fo fo that follow you. And then Django is there to say, yes, now you've got these people, let us make money from them, let us sell it to them. So, ooh, uh, I think we, artists need to be educated, and they actually, one of the YouTube. If you are saying that, would have been studio, now that Tanga Kuyimba, Chizu wa kuta ungo beki chingo wa chisi ya shishi tenge so matiem. Asuno beka chingo cha kuo uva waita, setik si za kuo uva waita, nundi chi? Yoku chaka kutisuru kutengwa, yoku nyanyo tengwa kupi, mm -hmm. ipi eri ya yoku nyanyo tengwa chingwa changu, leka ungo beki chingo wa chisi ya chakadaru. Mm -hmm. So this is where Kosha is trying to say, guys, atis kuda kuku bila imari wan, atis kuda kuku tolele vanu wa muru kustafama page enyu, but we are trying to make a Zimbabwe, 
in the in music industry, you know, to, to pay bills. And I think it's also a misconception because people forget that um, our introduction was through investing in a brand. Takura wasn't not wasn't a blown brand. When we started working with him, he had about two thousand followers. If we were saying if that was true, it means we would have only worked with people who are at 100,000 followers and above. So from day one, we've actually, and I, I was saying this yesterday, we've, in, we've carried the biggest cost of being a pioneer, of being an educator, being an investor. Because now, thank goodness, we now are all aware of what being digital means. We now take seriously your followership, your you know, streams and everything. But three years ago, that wasn't the case. Seven years ago, when Django came in, it was far from the case. So, no, we just don't take made brands. Right. Musa Effect, for example, is a brand new act that we're excited about. You will feel him, and by the time we're done with him, you'll be like, okay. Because hopefully that is an invested brand that will show you that we can work with someone from the ground up. So you'll be the third brand, I think, we're working with from the ground up. Yes, the killer T's are made names, but strategic planning and brand building, I, I, you can start it at any point and reposition a brand or extend, like he's doing with Raza, the reach of the brand, and that's what we're about as brand builders. Um, we are working a lot with artists from Chillspot. I do and exclusively dealing with Chillspot and uh, what's your relationship with Chillspot? Because I think a lot of the misconception that is there uh, is from your relationship with Chillspot and then uh, the other step was they, they somehow feel, okay, these are Chillspot people, so we're not going to work with them, we don't trust them. Wow. I think I'll ask Jungle to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if I may answer that, um, that's, that's false news. As in, we just don't deal with Chewspot, right? We have the, biz like the business is open for everybody. Mm -hmm. But what we ask for is, um, okay, you want to do business with us. What's your strategy? How well do you understand the business? Because honestly speaking, everything that we do, you have to make business sense. So us working with Chewspot, right? It doesn't mean that we have closed the door for other stables, right? So Chewsport right now may be the ones who are getting it. So them getting it doesn't mean that we have just said we are now just working with Chewsport. Now we can always work with other stables which are not Chewsport. I don't know if that's we're if that answers. Yes. Mm, we're all <laughs> for business. Yes. Yeah, because I mean as distributors, Django is not does not discriminate. A, if you have a great song, of course we would like that great song on our catalog because to dog gets not mad. Yeah. But it's yeah. not you know, so distributors, management, companies, they don't work on preference. They work <clears throat> on do you understand the business, do you understand the model, are you applying this software, mm -hmm. engaging, mm -hmm. let's make money. And you spoke <coughs> about transparency and uh, it's one of the key things that possibly is uh, helped the conspiracy grow mm. that they, there hasn't been so much transparency between managers and their artists and uh, the whole chain of the music industry in Zimbabwe mm. is, 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 is clouded in secrecy. You know, what is Kosha as a brand doing to make sure that there is uh, integrity, there is credibility there is accountability, there is an understanding at every level and everything is done uh, with contracts and proper understanding so that the artists understand and also the other industry players understand what coach is doing. Mm. I think um, the first part for us is absolutely we're fans of contracts. Number one, the legal side of things is important to us. In our experience, not everyone respects a contract, and we have suffered that greatly because it's. And, and I've said this before, we the industry is one thing, but the hardest pain we've had to deal with is the talents we had taken on, who have done us the most dirt or the most stupid stuff. 
but um, you grow, you learn, you stand up and, and, and you move again. Then because this is we're not just trying to stay a nucleus as just entertainers or just to stay in music, to engage other players like invest, investors or corporates, you have to present cases, case studies for them that they can follow, you know, follow up on and follow through with. And if you're talking to an investor and you're saying, hey, we want $10,000 to put to allocate towards this brand, they're going to ask, for, okay, let's see which projects you guys have done before, how much money was used, just to be able to show them that means we have to have record records of that. So we are big on records. We take down everything, how much was spent here, just to put a buzz in our shoes, but we need to record that expense. Because now when you're trying to grow outside of just what we're doing, you need to be able to have these figures, have these numbers presented and qualified and quantified. And all of this is also communicated with our talent. Sometimes it, the education may take longer because understanding Evan and Luciana, but from the get go, it's communicated. We send monthly reports on the distribution side, on the management side. We also send monthly statements of how much business was done on, on your behalf and by your brand. So each brand has operates as a as a separate cost center with how much money was spent just to go for meetings on behalf of Miss Red, for example, and how much invoicing or how much money was brought in by that brand, minus that, how much is left for the brand. All of this is shared and communicated. And again, the other part that we've tried to really bring into the fold when it comes to the creators we work with is to have them understanding the financial management that's required to grow business. And you want 100% of the money you've made. It doesn't make sense because guess what? You need to reinvest in the brand to grow that brand's business. So, sorry, I thought I'd put it offline. But, but um, yeah, so we do so much to not only educate the teams we're working with, but to also make sure it should they be an investor wanting to work with us, they can also study and tra track back our success stories or the business and how we've been growing to make an informed decision to or not to invest with us. And do you think artists are starting to understand this? Uh, do you see an improvement in uh, the enlightenment on the part of the artists? Some, yes. <coughs> that's, a key, that's, that's a key word. Some. Some. And I think she said something when she started working at Kosha, and that I think has become my mantra going forward, to say you have to understand that the model is what it is, it's a model. At the end of the day, what, how the model thrives is you have the right player at the right time who's ready to work the model. So where we're at now is we can't keep spending our investment money or time educating. We'd rather say, I want to know I just do more research, come back when you're ready. <laughs> because like, like she said, we're out here to make money, we're out here to pay bills, keep lights on. If you don't get it, maybe you never will. Sorry, Jacob, I put what no opportunity. Sorry, just what she said. Um, within the arts and culture industry, we had or we have a bridge basically between the talent itself and the financial aspect of it. Uh, you you'd see that an artist has a talent, mm -hmm. right? But then they don't have a proper management system to it. Maybe you have a relative, an uncle or brother who is just in there for it. Now, when such agreements are entered into, that's more of a gentleman's agreement where there's nothing solid written down, there are no codes of conduct whatsoever. Mm. So if uh, anyone makes money, you're not accountable to anyone at that point in time. You just grab whatever you can and look out for yourself. Now, this is the bridge that Kosha is trying to, sorry, the gap that Kosha is trying to bridge now, such that we provide a suitable code of conduct that we abide by and a contract that we give to the artist, make sure that they understand it, they go through it, and they sign it. Now the fact that they have signed it uh, shows clear consent, that they are in agreement to our terms. Be it 50%, 30%, whatever, they're in agreement to it. They don't feel as if we're doing them dirt. Mm. It's more of a solid binding agreement. That's how we work as Kosha. Great. Where do the streets say is that uh, you give an advance to DJ Fanta in the form of a car. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, sorry, that is so funny. Okay, I'm finished. Uh, this is lovely. So, Word on the street. Yes, so it's nice. that, uh, the blue message is that <laughs> Wow. Wow. Uh, is an advance from Kosha, so mm. that the artist that comes to choose for mm -hmm. makes sure that their music is <laughs> from Jungle and Kosha. 
Yeah, I think you've seen the response. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What, 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 you know? Shut up, I'm talking about something else. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, my guy. I think, I think with, with chill sport, wow. I think distribution can answer that. Because yeah. With chill sport, it's, they are a distributed brand. Am I sorry? Yeah, so, yeah. Right. so they yeah. bring their music and then they he puts the music on different platforms as they had agreed with mm. Django. I mean, I wish you knew Django's president. He would <laughs> laugh out loud because there is no one artist that has ever gotten an advance that much to buy wow. a car. Mm. When Django advances, it's to do with making a song mm. and a video. That's as right. far as our advances go as Django is concerned. But um, I think I could say, safely say I welcome such you know, conspiracy theories. It means people see us making such big monies <laughs> to be able to buy people cars to yeah. guarantee business. Mm-hmm. Maybe in our tenth tenth year mm-hmm. will be at that point that we give artists cars. advances. Yeah. Cars. <laughs> Not cars yeah. per se, yeah. but it is an advance. But no. As yeah. uh, I think people are just, <laughs> are just seeing the good relationship yeah, and we are having because they they them. are open yeah. to learn, open to know more about the business side. And with that interaction that we keep having with them, people out there then see as if but I was these are just hungry people coming to Porsche to learn. Choose mm-hmm. for choose for them their own source of revenues. Like mm-hmm. Like mm. we don't even know where he got the money. <laughs> like, <laughs> he came to when he was when he came to Django, he already had the car. Yeah, so, I was gonna say. Like we don't even know, like it's because you know everyone knows about Fantan. Mm-hmm. So Fantan's relationship with Django Kosha, I na good I na good tanga good you know. So it's just something that Fantan and his side to spot they work, you know. We do. They have their own business that uh, that that side. So I don't think I would want to bribe Fountain for him to come for distribution. Cause my guy, me, I'm your salesman. You know, <laughs> I sell music for you. So why would I pay you to come to, to, come me? to me? You get it. So you, you see the value that is there for you to come so that we sell your music mm-hmm. on digital platforms. <coughs> Not oh, that yes. me, I, we, like, obviously I would want to reach out so that you get a better understanding, yeah. but it's not like me, I want you, like you come to me and you bribe me, or I bribe you so that you dispute your music through, through me. me oh no. You get it. Mm. Look Django right now, Django Nigeria, they distribute for bigger artists. Yeah. They have the Simis, they have the Fowls, the Mayokuns. Mayokun. You get it. So. I, I'm sorry to say this, Zimbabwe, we haven't got there yet <laughs> compared <laughs> to other jungle artists. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, guys. For us, I know. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's unfortunate that the Phantom and team in England would have found Phantom and Emma Munzo. I don't know. I like that question. Um, maybe I'll, sp- I'll speak on that. In my experience, it has been challenging to say the least uh and for me also i think chaganeta was when i first came i had the horrible culture shock of being an outsider coming in so you genuinely didn't know what to expect and i spoke with a very big accent i really believe it's toned down now i used to talk like that a lot of the time you know <laughs> so i think that was already like whoa <laughs> and i had to acclimatize real quick but i think um i found people very um curious as well as ah, but you know and the hindrances have been with um established if you want godfathers so to speak of the of the industry where especially the music scene and i came through with the hip-hop act which is already a deviant genre in as far as zimbabwe is concerned so and you know i rattled enough feathers with my approach and i'm not a very patient person i'm quite abrasive and i swear a lot so i had a lot of wow she is not your conventional woman so to speak then being young um people are slow to 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 respond positively to what you're offering because i think people are used they they think age means experience age means they know what they're talking about they know what they're doing but for us it's about exposure that's what we're big on and it's i you know and i always say no judge me on my output rather than what you're looking at if i can do the job then we can be talking so it has been a hindrance but i think i've handled it as well as i could 
ndingo ari muna stubborn so we need to know what to manage watch <laughs> and I'll show you, you know. But um, and I think the patriarchal factor as well cannot be ignored. Yeah. We always prefer men in charge, and I always push the guys. With guys, you know, Pangpacho, fine. We'll play to the convention. Chimane, <laughs> bamberi, set the tone. Those ongo shika, she got. Oh yeah, you know, as they were saying, and then we finish the deal. So we have to play within the cultural context that we live in but at the end of the day internally we know what's what's what and i always say with the guys it's not about age because she's probably you know, the youngest person in our team mm-hmm. and but it's about what she brings to the table and we have to respect each other and what we bring because we are big on results we're big on performance if you're not performing i don't care i don't care and i don't know how to say to people ah, maradie, no 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 mm-hmm. it's john <laughs> you know that sort of thing, and that's the culture we are uh, fostering at Kosha, and yeah, and I think in time the industry will also morph into that because the new players are the ones to be fair who are more exposed right now mm-hmm. and have the energy and the new ideas, and we need to tap into the newness to make things grow. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, do you have female artists on? Stable, or it's mainly male artists? Uh, side? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have female, uh, we, we have Freya, if you can, I'm sure you know her, like Freya. Uh, maybe you can follow her. On <laughs> yeah, Do you like Freya? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and we have Rachel J. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have Rachel J. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. She's um just you, you like Rachel J. Like yeah. 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 And she, she she got a video coming up. Just Soon, so, but a yes. boom, yeah. boom dog. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, and also we're not just limited to those ones, but if we are still as in the business, as I said earlier on, we're open. Uh, we're open for business, and if you feel like you're a female and. You feel like uh, the, the the industry is watering you down, isn't you're not getting much exposure. You know where to go, you know where to come. Mm-hmm. We are here. Yeah. And we want more female right. girls to represent. Because there's always a problem of if you are in the for in my experience, if you are now in the art industry talking to different people, <coughs> ooh, what are sa wundu? Like kumbani ngo is telling my way, I'm to fan by na ningi, ana ningi. But for me is well this is what i love to do and this is actually fun i want to grow in this and make money with it so we still need our society to agree with us and just open like up. open up just like you say who one angry lawyer can you please say who one angry musician who one angry actress so i think for the females we urge them to come up and do what they want to do with it singing acting please come to Kosha, we will help you because there's a lot of things like in my experience everybody wants to sleep with you just because you're female so we're just saying guys Gatoto, let us be the men just come up let's work put out your content yeah but actually sorry this is probably going to be off the record guys in zim you also just need to do your own you know do, do better just because we're female doesn't mean we're game yeah. Some of us actually are more married to money, okay, right. and success than we are to the idea of being your wife or side chick. Actually, you know, and yes, no gonna go boy, but it's mm-hmm. facts. Don't and always see a woman and think chimoko. See right. a woman and you think, how can we grow together financially first? Exactly. And also, please know that <laughs> some of us is. we are open to partnership. Yes. I just think it's a bummer. You want to cheat us, Zimbabwean words? But no, I can't cheat. Like Ew. why do <laughs> it? <laughs> well, quantity is not about. So here's the thing: some people kind of like tend to up the ante a little bit. I mean, it's 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 words. Yes, they might be profane. They might be a little bit rude. But then it's all about expression. Absolutely. But then kind of shas wonyanya. It's more like you're now pushing like the rudeness to like you know you're, you're pushing your not not notoriety thank you mm-hmm. so i don't i don't i don't know whether people are actually doing that you know intentionally or it's inadvertently because of the era and the you know the culture that we're in right now I'm, but then I'm I also sure. I also I also feel I mean as a girl as a woman i think it's necessary to push the envelope that's what creative license means at the you know in the first place and i always say in the 80s madonna came through and she made us go what 
it was necessary because today girls in America have more rights than they did before. So yes, profanity may come across harsh to conservative ears, but if I'm angry, there's no other word than fuck to express how I feel. Right. How that makes you feel, I'm sorry, but I I'm pissed off. So th- and that's language. But then how people respond to that or whatever, it's up to them. Then, of course, yeah, you've got some people that are just more sexually liberated than others. I remember there was a debate about Kiki Badis. She's one of the girls we distribute for. I think Kiki is a necessary brand in our society because, yes, we need to see women and see them in charge of their sexuality and its expression because, actually, we're not passive about these things. And it's important. And... Again, we are in a, in a, I think Zimbabwe does not realize how unique a society it is. We have families that have, say, 50% or 80% of their relatives in the diaspora. These kids are being educated differently, culturally differently, to kids that are growing up. So when we meet on a holiday, we're mixing, and, so, and also we're now connected digitally. So we're seeing a lot of different culture anyway, and it's informing how we see ourselves, how we communicate, how we express ourselves. Like, I don't have to go to America to know what Cardi B is. Right. I'm interacting with her online. So if I'm an artist upcoming, I may then say she's one of my influences, and because she is, she somehow informs the way I express myself. And it's okay, I think, genuinely. And maybe and who I saw, it doesn't mean she's... She has her principles, but she has a different way of expressing mm-hmm. how she feels. So, yeah. Yeah, I have quite, quite a bold response there. Um, <laughs> my, my, my last question uh, is my two questions, but one question, two parts. Uh, April, on radio. Mm-hmm. Do you think local is getting enough April on radio? Mm. I, I, I don't know those that listen to radio. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't think it is. Um, no, local. I don't. Yeah, local, local music, music. Mm. is it? Is it? Is it? No, it, but, it, I it, think, it, right, but I think. I think in my sorry. Um. So so you should go back to the era. Yeah, my uncle Jonathan Moyo. I'm joking. So you go back <laughs> to the era. Yeah, Jonathan Moyo. Um. Lots of ra- uh, feathers were ruffled by that 100% local content. Yeah. But they pass now. We go on Tembu. We have 100% local content. It is now born at the birth of urban groups. Uh, it would never never come yeah. come to play. So, uh, it's it's only when you have intentional. Yeah. Um, um, yes, or intentional or policies, etc. That you actually get people go to okay, hold up. Yes, Cardi B, Beyonce, yeah, but then you put her Sarudza in a room because can a person not answer not her Sarudza in a room bizai Sarudza in a room bizai. I'm not going to talk to you. So to answer your question, um, it's no longer like a hundred percent local <clears throat> content like what it was in the night. I remember at some point they were given stipulation here eighty twenty in favor mm-hmm. of local content, but even then I, I feel like it's more like sixty forty, and I feel like radio stations actually need to start pushing for local music more mm-hmm. only when you do that are you going to have the young and up, upcoming okay. artists coming through with their demos etc they're not going to be waiting for us to be bribing fantan to give them a car and then they go to fantan <laughs> and they come and get distributed <laughs> one way yeah, that direct to the station yeah. demo hour. and if you're good guess what your shit is going to get played but then if you're not going to be given the platform if you know what you're going to get it's kind of like a bit defeatist you can't like give up before you've even started. Mm. So, you know. Yeah, I think radios should also open up to new upcoming artists because there's a lot of talk of who in Indonesia na uproti kuzi shavani asin genda kupa FM on genda kusta FM on genda kupi and the school play. So I feel like they should be open to say, hey, new kids, bring your stuff. Here's an email, send your stuff and. Mm have that selection you would not we shouldn't hear the same songs playing over and over again yes they can play because of public demand but let us hear a section maybe of the new stuff yeah, yeah so like that there should be a statement in on different radio platforms that's just dedicated to you and un, unsigned uh, yeah or yes and you know new artists because yeah, in artists. the uk mm-hmm. they have their playlist a b c d e and then mm-hmm. they have segments in one z uh, unsigned hour yes. where it's just in and everything that came mm-hmm. through because yes as much as we want to put new kids on we'll also advocate for wh- what does commercial now mean the distinction mm-hmm. so being played on radio is a marker of success right. for an up and coming artist or for an established artist and the more rotation you get obviously means you're doing something right because you're getting yeah. more requests yeah. but I 100% agree with that 
So if you look, if you look at the model that's there, like in England and in, in the states, there's lots of community radios. Yeah. So I'm very happy because there's lots of little community radio stations that are coming up now. Mm. So hopefully it opens it up. So when we start, we are not just going to be blowing your chest. Can we go 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 away? We go go show and go and get chichi chichi. We need radio station. We go go go. And there's some music here. And you know, see what happens. Right. Right. Well, uh, lastly, you spoke about diamonds and uh, five, ten years from now. Who would you say, maybe three or four or five artists that you would say, look, these are the artists to look forward to in the next five years in Zimbabwe that could possibly get on the same radar as Davido or uh, Whiskey or Bear Boy or Nasty C. But we'll be biased, you know. We'll talk yeah. about the people we <laughs> <Stop that. laughs> yeah, We'll be biased. <laughs> um, I mean, I would definitely say Enzo. Enzo, I saw, and, yeah. and not just because he's making hits, but his work ethic is impeccable. Genuinely, like, hands down, one of the hardest working artists we've come across. And from still very humble. Very humble, very focused. He wants to grow. So if you still want to grow, I said, watch Fonera. Definitely, you're gonna grow. Then I genuinely still believe in Musa, hundred percent. I think he's a different, a, the right expression, especially when you're saying you're coming from Zim. Um, he still has a lot of growing to do in terms of finding himself, the voice as an artist, and really honing his skills. But he's dedicated to the craft, so he can he can definitely do that. Um, other artists that. Tam- yeah, ta- Tammy. yeah, Tammy. Ooh. Tammy, I genuinely believe she's got so much more to yeah. give us. But you know, the funny thing and the most interesting thing about Zim, six months down the line, there'll be a new name, hmm. and because the industry is still very young and it's still penetrable. Right now, anybody can come up can and come disrupt up things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think those three, yes. And let's see what December holds. Hopefully, there'll be someone new and all we'll running. Hope I take. Like, <laughs> For my side, I, ju- I just think any artist who got discipline for work. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Can make it. Like, if we say we have a meeting, we have a rehearsal at they 10 o'clock, up. they show, show up, up at time. half past nine. You know? Absolutely. So, any artist, I believe, any artist who have that work ethic can mm-hmm. make it. Can make it. So, no, without mentioning names, but. Yeah, shout out! I think that deserves a shout out. Very, very. Yeah, so it's any artist that runs the course, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, uh, it's been awesome. It's yeah. been a great interview because I think you touched on so many things, not mm-hmm. just the question part, but actually the whole landscape of the Zimbabwe has seen and other topical issues that people are even be scared of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's it's quite interesting that you guys are at liberty to talk about so many things that a lot of us have conversations in the closet and <laughs> create conspiracies there. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. We run with them as truth. Yeah. Um, one question that I have missed out is who owns the rights for the music that Django and Kosha distribute? Do artists own the music? Do they see the rights to the distributor? And yeah. And what happened when <coughs> their contract lapses? They still access their account mm. or you guys shut it down or wow. what happens? There? You know what hurts me is that question just shows us how much more learning <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so again when it comes to music copyright and ownership of that copyright, it stands with the artist or the producer of the song. Now, we as distributors are given the license to distribute, and a license can go for three months to years to lifetime, you know. And a jungle, their license is the, the agreement asks for 24 months that we have the license to distribute this project which has these songs or these assets under it. <coughs> now, when two years lapses and you say, ah, Django, thank you for your business, and shout out Shananemi, we give you two options. Do we take down what we had previously released or do we continue to, re- to keep it up there and report to you? That's, again, the decision of the, the oh, artist or the record label or the producer who's given us the music. So 100% it's yours. We are just given a license. But on the Kosha side, where we are coming in as um, investors on the brands that we invest in, we have shared 
um, ownership because we've literally produced or funded the production of that record. But Kujango, it's yours. In our so social media mm. platforms, firstly, because we want them to know that there's something called social media. So <laughs> <laughs> social media platforms at kosha underscore IG and um, email uh, kosha business at gmail.com and well, if anybody can reference you to our offices, that would be great as well. Right. And also, I would like people to know more about Django. What, right. What's Django? What Django does? Like what Django is in what distribution side? You no. Know, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's www.django global. Global. Yeah. So you can Global. visit the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Real freedom is Okay, let's go. Eagle Radio, new voices amplified. Eagle Radio. Radio.